A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Australia's most popular overseas holiday destination is now Japan. Japan is also one of our closest trading partners. And there are a number of Christians in Japan as well. And it is our great pleasure today to welcome Laurie Bittar. He's a leader in Presence Church Gold Coast that have a fellowship for Japanese people. He works in cybersecurity during the day and he's also translating part of the Alpha course into Japanese. And we welcome Laurie to 2020 today. Hey, Andrew. Great. Great to be here. It's great to have you here, Laurie. So tell us about your background. Why are you, number one, involved in a Japanese fellowship at Presence Church? And number two, why are you translating the part of the Alpha course into Japanese? Great question. So I guess my involvement, first of all, starts with my half-Japanese background. But I never really took much, I guess, interest in my Japanese background so seriously until maybe around 2015. Uh, that's when my, um, my grandfather passed away from a stroke, and he's a Japanese guy. Um, and so at that time, I couldn't really speak much Japanese. And so I thought, well, gee, like the population of Jap- Japanese Christians is so low. Um, who's going to tell them the gospel, right? Because there's obviously a, a language barrier there. Uh, so I guess I kind of took it upon myself to learn Japanese and to, I really felt like God put Japan on my heart at that point to take it more seriously. I mean, a couple of years before my granddad passed away, I kind of got a little bit of a nudge from, from God to kind of take an interest in that. But, you know, career was going great. You know, I just got promoted to a new job, um, great salary. And to give that all up, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just wait a couple more years, you know, see how things go. Um, but my, I guess my granddad's passing was the real kind of like catalyst to say, nah, got to, got to be more serious with this. And I've just, got to, I've just got to do it and make it happen. Yeah, so you've uh, made it your mission to mm. reach Japanese people. So you've obviously learned Japanese. Yeah. And uh, so growing up, did your which parent was Japanese, by the way? Uh, my mum was Japanese. So did she try and teach you Japanese when you were young? Not really, but we did. Li- I did um, spend two years in Japan as a kid. So I got kind of like the basics in terms of the pronunciation and things like that. But my vocabulary was limited to obviously like a you know, six-year-old kid kind of thing. So yep. Yeah. And, and what are we now? What age group would you, uh, you classify uh, your Japanese at, <laughs> at now? Uh, now it's probably around maybe university level. Yeah, but my, I work in a full-time job where I speak Japanese to customers. So it's good enough to be able to work in a Japanese kind of environment. So Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, for our listeners who, as I said, a lot of Aussies are going to Japan now for holidays. Mm. I mean, I know so many people that rave about Japan as a destination. And uh, there's a lot of Japanese in certain parts of Australia, like the Gold yeah. Coast, for example, yeah. where you live. So uh, for, for our listeners, what percentage of Japanese people are Christian? So statistically speaking, it's around 1.6%, and it's been that way ever. Like it's been that way from the beginning, basically. It's never gone above 2% from the from the research that I've done. Uh, so that puts it around 2 million people today. Okay, yeah. so it's a fairly sizable population, but yeah. as a percentage, it's not. Yeah. And uh, in your experience, what is a good way to reach a Japanese person with the gospel? Because I know there's a lot of cultural intricacies and language barriers and just different things going on that the average Aussie is not really aware of. Yeah. So what's a good approach if you just meet a Japanese person, maybe you're on holidays, maybe you meet one here in Australia and you want to reach them for Jesus and what, what should someone do? Yeah, I think the, the, the thinking around this is t- typically around like, you know, cultural contextualization. And you hear all these things like we need to contextualize it for Japanese people. But my personal conviction is that uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's what the Bible teaches. So I think if you just kind of give it to them straight in love and communicate the message of the gospel truthfully in love to say like, you know, hey, I care about you and I care about your eternal future. That's why I want to share Jesus with you. And if you do so transparently, I think that's the best way to communicate the gospel to Japanese people. Okay, so use scriptures, be very direct, but obviously very compassionate and loving at the same time. What's been your experience when you've done this with Japanese people? or How do they respond to the gospel? Yeah, great question. So about uh, two years ago in Brisbane, I started a little small group of Japanese people with the view to evangelize to them. And so we invited, you know, university students who were Japanese and I had a lot of pressure from people to say, oh, no, like, just keep it like a social event because people are going to be scared if you, like, you know, use too much Bible or something like that. And I'm like, I, I was almost going to do that, but then I felt a conviction from God say, no, keep it about me. And so I just decided I'm going to keep it like word-centered, God-centered, Bible-centered. And if no one comes, I'm okay with that because, God, I'm going to keep it about you and you have to show up to, to save people's hearts. And so we did that for about three months and one person came to faith in that three-month period. So... I feel like God, it was God saying to me, like, if you honor me, I'll honor you. 
Yeah, I love that. Well, Jesus said, you know, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. And uh, yeah, great policy there, uh, mate. I've heard this in, you know, cross-cultural communication in other nations too. If you go to another nation, for example, and they have another religion, you don't go there and try and combat their religion and Mm. criticize it and put it down and say how wrong it is. You just go there and preach Jesus and lift him up and people believe in him, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so you're involved in the uh, the Japanese fellowship at your local church called Presence Church. And I will put it out there. Our mm. afternoon host, Greg Newman, also attends that church because he, he also has a real heart for Japanese people. If you've never met Greg, Greg is not Japanese. He doesn't look Japanese. <laughs> he doesn't sound Japanese, but he's definitely turning Japanese, as the old song <laughs> used to say. He loves a sushi. But, um, yeah, so in that fellowship, uh, tell us some more stories of, of real transformation that Japanese people have seen by meeting Jesus. Yeah, so I guess in that in this um in the presence church, it's kind of difficult to see that transformation because we have a lot of transient people come in. So you know, working holiday students who are only here for a limited number of time, and so the membership has really changed over the years. But it has a very long history. I mean, this church has been around for about thirty years, I believe now, um, and it, and God just keeps it alive, you know. And and presence church have been such a great support and help to us by you know helping us use a facility and partnering with us uh, in the mission and stuff like that. So. In terms of like direct impact, I haven't personally seen that myself, but I have heard stories from past members who, you know, have seen, you know, God work in that community very powerfully. So, yeah. yeah. And so you obviously, following on that theme of mm. wanting to reach people, you've taken it upon yourself yep. to translate part of the Alpha course into Japanese. Tell me about that journey. Yeah, so rather than translating it, I want to kind of create a content where it's kind of similar to Alpha, but very, I guess, j- Japified, if that's even a word. So um, instead of having like, like a 12-week thing where you get people to come along for 12 weeks, I want to do like a one episode where Christians in Japan can use that content, play it in their house, and have a conversation about God in a very loving but direct way. Um, so the, the video I'm working on at the moment, um, the topic discussion topic will be what happens when we die? And so the video is going to go through like, you know, facilitating discussion of this topic amongst non-Christian Japanese people. It's all in Japanese. And so we'll also um, look at what the Bible says about this topic and present what the Bible says in a very clear and direct way to Japanese people um, and say, you know, like, well, this is what the Bible says. What do you think? And so I think a lot of Japanese people are very intimidated by having this conversation, especially Christians, to share this with their non-Christian friends. So that's so we want to make this content kind of accessible and a comfortable and kind of like easy and accessible way for Christians to share their faith in Japan. Yeah, so what does the average Japanese people or person, I should mm. say, think about life after death in their traditional religion? What is their belief? So a lot of people think that Japanese people are like Shinto or Buddhist. But, I mean, they, they practice these things out of like a more of like a family kind of cultural thing. It's not really like they believe in Buddha or, or Shinto or anything like that. They, they wouldn't even know how to explain what Buddhism is, to be honest. So I think the, the prevailing religion in Japan is atheism. So they, know, they believe that they are their own god. They make their own decisions. If they don't make it happen, nothing will happen. So it's more like they are responsible for their own lives. They are their own gods, is, is what my understanding has been through my experience. Okay, that's interesting because obviously years ago mm. uh, in World War II, many believed that the emperor was God. Emperor mm. Hirohito was God. Mm. He was the um, the divine one, and many died in World War II for their emperor and who they believed was God. So you're saying modern Japan, most are actually very atheistic and don't believe in any God. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow, so you're yeah. dealing with an atheist, someone who doesn't even think there is a God, but they're just self-made and they're all about working and materialism. And it sounds like a real harvest field, Laurie. It is, yeah. I mean, the Bible even says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So let's get those workers out there, eh? Yeah. Has there been many success stories of mission in Japan and church planting in Japan that you're aware of? Uh, so the one I can think of is I was going to a church called Double Across in Japan for about a year. Um, and I did see some missionaries attend that church from Crew. They call Campus Crusade for Christ. Yep. So they're more like you know university campus missionaries who build relationships with students, and they run some like you know social events on campus and things like that. So I have seen um, a few Christians come to our church through that missions agency, which has been pretty pretty cool. And even one girl actually who was not a Christian who came through that um, missionary is now like kind of um, working for Crew and is actually like recruiting other missionaries and, re- and doing outreach herself as well. So it's it's a wonderful fruit to see that happen. Yeah, yeah that's real transformation, isn't mm. it? So God is moving there. I know years ago a South Korean pastor called Yong Cho said God really put 
uh, Japan on his heart. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was a number of years ago in the 80s. I think he wrote that book. And uh, I think he was actually brutalized by Japanese soldiers in World War II when he was mm. a young boy. And God took him on this real journey of forgiveness, forgiving wow. the Japanese people so that he could effectively reach them. So they've had a lot of prayer and a lot of mission outreach probably in the last 100 years or so, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. There's, I think God's putting Japan on a lot of people's hearts. I mean, there's a lot of like Aussie churches down in Japan as well doing some um, interest, interesting things out there, yeah. Yeah, in fact, you just remind me, I have heard about another church on the Gold Coast where you live. Mm. Uh, I won't mention the name right now, but they are talking about sending a, a couple, I think, over to Japan fairly soon to start yeah, wow. a church. So, yeah, so I guess any final thoughts, Laurie, for any of our listeners who are going to Japan for a holiday soon or they maybe have got a Japanese student staying with them or they're bumping into Japanese people at their local Japanese restaurant, um, any final thoughts or ideas on how we can try and reach our Japanese friends? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is just to build a relationship first and get to know them because I think without the relationship aspect, people won't really listen to what you have to say. So they have to know that, like, you know, you're a safe person, they, 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 can, they can trust you and that you actually care about them. I think that's where the foundation starts. And that's why I want to make that kind of like alpha kind of course where we rely on Christians who already have relationships with people to invite them along to these discussions. So the relational aspect is really, really key. So I think the first step is just to build relationships, maybe even like host some Japanese students um, from overseas because, as you know, we're in a rental crisis, so people need homes to stay in. Um, so I think just, just basically to have relationships with people is, is a great start. So does that mean that Japanese people are very relational, that they respond well to people initiating relationship and just showing politeness and manners and just, just building a nice human friendship? Yeah, so I think Japanese people are very good at um, interacting with people and, and being very polite and respectful. Um, I think on the inside, they're quite timid, but on the, on the outward appearance, they're very kind of like, um, they respond really well to, you know, social interactions and things like that. So I think they are very respectful. So definitely, um, you shouldn't be scared about approaching a Japanese person. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we can obviously all pray and we can build relationship. Yeah. And after relationship, hopefully we can engage in conversation ask questions about life after death, where we're going to go when we die. Yep. Well, Laurie Bittar, I want to thank you so much for joining us on 2020 Today, and I hope and pray that many of our listeners now feel a little bit more equipped uh, with a bit more knowledge and a bit more understanding and how we can try and reach our Japanese neighbors. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Andrew. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.